Hi, I'm Lisa, and I've decided to throw my hat in the ring um, with, uh, with filming a video today. Woke up this morning. It's absolutely a glorious, glorious spring day. Um, we've had just tremendous amount of rain here in Southern California. And I finally took a walk around the property and realized I've got a lot of work to do. Um, to get the garden in shape before summer and before everything starts to bloom. Um, but I don't know about you, this winter I did a lot of reading and I've, I've read quite a few books on fasting. I was curious about keto, what it means to be vegan. And um, it just, I don't, I don't know how you feel, but it created a lot of confusion for me as far as like, what is the best way to eat? And I've come to some kind of interesting conclusions, but I do have a ton of books um, that I've loved, that have taught me a lot. And I wanted to talk a little bit about um, some of my conclusions. So let's, uh, let's start with that. So the thing about self-help books is, I guess the first question is why do we read a book? Because we're wanting to gain new information. Why do we want to gain new information? Because we, we want to um, change our life in some way. We want, we look for inspiration. Um, we look for some kind of encouragement. And those are really good things, but it can be overwhelming because like the idea of fasting, for instance, this is a wonderful book, but the idea of fasting is, is such a new concept in so many ways, and it can be intimidating and scary and um, a little overwhelming. But the truth is we're not going to sustain any particular form of eating um, or any kind of exercise regimen or anything um, uh, unless it is to some degree pleasing, satisfying to our soul, to our spirit, and to our mind. So we're not just a body. Um, we're not robots. And we, um, it's, it's learning to integrate things kind of slowly into, into our lifestyle in a way that works. Um, I was thinking about We've been, I've been loading my husband up with vegetables in kind of fun, surprising ways because we need to get in more antioxidants. This winter, I've been making a ton of soup, um, all veggie soups that are so delicious and so nourishing and comforting in the cold and it's been rainy. Um, now that it's springtime, I'm thinking about carrots and kind of fresh and light soups. So before we have dinner, we have a soup and we have a salad and then we have our dinner and that's just a way to just load up kind of the, um, with good nu nutrition in ways that taste delicious and, um, and, and feel good to your spirit. Today, I wanted to make the carrot, a carrot ginger soup. Um, so we'll go into the kitchen. And before that, I think we're gonna head out to the garden. It's just so amazing to be outside today. Glorious but so much work. Typically, um, maybe around January is when I would cut everything back, but we've had too much rain to get out here and do that. So um, that'll be another video for another day. But for today, I'm gonna cut um, some lavender. Lavender grows here on our property like a weed and it all needs to be cut back in order to put out new blooms. So here's one. So I'm not sure how this is gonna hold up as a as a flower display but we'll see it has to be cut back anyway and I hate to I hate to just um, waste it but back to the the idea of 
what it means to actually grow and um, integrate new habits, um, healthier habits or ways of being. I do think about how things grow. If you think about it, now lavender, it doesn't require too much in the way of fertilizer and it doesn't like too much water. And so I was thinking about what, what it means to take in like too much information, TMI, or being too hard on ourselves is kind of like what it would mean to, to, to take in too much fertilizer. It, it would actually kill a plant. And I think it does the same thing for us. Um, just, it's just too much too soon, too high of an expectation. Little bits along the way are probably um, little changes over time. I like to think of like what it, what it means to grow like 1% every day in some way. To do one thing that makes me feel like, okay, today I grew a little bit. And that's it. When I'm ever, I'm in the garden, I always think of my grandparents in Pasadena. They lived to be 95. And they were, you know, they made life seem so easy. It, it really shouldn't be that hard. We can't be too hard on ourselves. Kind of have to be kind. And what is self-care? It's not just like eating just the right thing at the right time. The other day it was raining and I just needed to make chocolate chip cookies. My soul needed chocolate chip cookies. Took me back to my childhood and so many happy memories. And that's a soul. That fed my soul. Um, you know, major, what, gluten and sugar load, <laughs> butter, it was amazing, so, and that's okay, look at this beautiful lavender, oh, I have so much more to trim, but this will all grow back, beautiful and happy, it, I'm gonna have to come back for seconds here. So I have this beautiful um, vase that was my grandparents and I'm going to attempt to put the lavender in there. I'm not sure if it's going to be too top, top heavy, but we'll see. It's filling up with water. Just enough water. Let's see the big experiment. Grab the whole thing and shove it in there. By George, I think it's gonna work. Let's see. Okay. Ooh. Heavy. All right. That's pretty fantastic. This carrot soup is so incredibly easy and I've made it many times. It's kind of my own little invention. You can do kind of a Thai, kind of a Thai flavored twist to it or not. There are all kinds of things that you can add to it or um, take away. I'm gonna do the most basic and then I'll talk about add-ons at the end. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is take about three pounds of carrots I counted, there are about 13 big um, carrots. 
if you have a if you have a way to to weigh them, I tend to weigh my food when I cook. Um, so this is three pounds of carrots. One of the things in California now is mandatory that we take all of our vegetable cuttings and all of our garden cuttings and, and put them in our green can. And so um, I started doing that and then I realized I'm going to all this trouble to, to, to save the, to put these in here. And it is kind of a lot of trouble. I mean, it's not that much trouble, but just recently I started digging holes and burying the compost in, in the garden. So now I did that about a month ago. So pretty soon I'm going to go out there and I'm going to dig it up and find out what it looks like. But these are biodegradable bags. So I put all my um, trimmings and everything that I don't use, even sometimes vegetables go bad. It is all now going into the ground, which is pretty awesome. All right, so let's start with this. The other thing I do is um, I like to, to, uh, to peel everything kind of in the sink and then just pick it up and pop it in. So let's get started. There's 12 more to go. This is gonna be a workout, so uh, let's speed this up. So all these amazing cuttings are going to go in my bin and they're going to go into my garden. Next, we're going to chop up the carrots, cut them in chunks. By the way, the carrots are so incredibly sweet in the springtime. And that's what makes for just a fabulous soup. Oops, forgot that guy. I love the sounds and the smells of cooking. I mean, who doesn't? It smells so fresh. It smells like spring. Next, I'm gonna chop up an onion because the onion is gonna start the process. The base of the soup is coconut oil and onion. Mm. I always keep onions and garlic and carrots and uh, coconut oil for that matter on hand. Always lots of kosher salt, fresh pepper. So this soup is really kind of a, in a way, it's kind of a pantry soup of things that um, I always keep. In the kitchen. The other thing I've been keeping lately is ginger right here. I've been buying it um, at Costco. It's organic and it, it keeps pretty well. I can keep it for couple months in the fridge. So I've been using a lot of ginger lately too. Ways to get really good, healthy 
Okay, so we have the other half of an onion to cut, but right now I'm gonna heat up the, the oil. Get this going. So coconut oil gives this soup such a fresh flavor. Coconut oil is so funny in the in the winter it's hard and in the summer it's liquid. So so about two two tablespoons of oil. We'll get the onions in there. Okay, let's cut the other onion. Oh, the oil is good and melted. In goes the onion. Love that sound. So this is just a quick saute to soften the onion. I would say anywhere from five to 10 minutes. So while the onion is sauteing, let's cut up the ginger. And we'll need to kind of microplane the, the ginger so it's nice and fine because ginger can become fibery and we don't want that. Nobody wants fiber in their soup. So this is a nice, big, beautiful bulb, bulb of ginger. It doesn't always come that way. And, um, a little bad part right there but the key is getting the skin off so that it can be grated on a microplane and the soup is gonna need it depends on how spicy you want your soup anywhere from two to three tablespoons of grated fresh ginger. So ginger is very wonky to, to figure out kind of how to get the best, the best of it. I'm sure there are people who are experts in cutting ginger and I'm, I'm not one of them. Just do my best. Has kind of a bark. I don't know. Is ginger? Is it an herb? Is it a spice? Is it a vegetable? I know it's really good for us. Hence why I put so much of it in the soup. And it actually adds heat. If you choose to do like three tablespoons, it'll be it'll be spicy, hot. And if if that's the case, then uh, cut back on the chili, chili pepper. Okay, so all these trimmings are going to go in the pot here. Oops. And then I'm going to grab my microplane and my um, garlic press. because the soup is gonna have uh, about three, about a, a tablespoon of minced garlic as well. So do the garlic in just a minute, but. Okay, 
So now we're going to um, mince about three cloves of garlic. One thing about garlic is I don't waste time on the little, the little cloves because they take too long. So I'm always happy when I find a bulb of garlic that has nice, big, beautiful cloves like that. Depending on how spicy, how garlicky you like your food, you can decide how much garlic you wanna put in. So it's worth it to invest in a nice, um, if you don't feel like mincing it yourself, it's nice to invest in a nice uh, garlic press that's easy to clean. I love this one. Okay, let's go put it in the soup. Garlic doesn't like to brown. So it's kind of the last thing that goes in. Okay. Now we'll uh, put the carrots in. Carrots go in. So easy. Right now we're just we've just got like four ingredients: onions, carrots, garlic, and ginger. I don't know why, but I kind of like to. I'm not really browning the carrots, but I kind of like to get that oil on the carrots. And then two quarts of chicken stock. for a good 20 minutes. I do like to add a little bit of heat, just some red chili pepper flakes, maybe a quarter, quarter teaspoon. This is a nice heat. Let's let this boil and simmer and then I'll be back. It's been about 20 minutes. In the meantime, I cleaned the kitchen, got everything picked up, grated some more ginger. It's about two tablespoons. Took a little while. So now let's test the carrots. Just a fork in one of the big pieces. Just it needs to go in nice and easy. It is easy. Bring it back to a boil. A taste, mainly taste for salt and pepper. Maybe it's a little bit, a little bit of salt. The chicken stock has it is salted. But I think it just needs a little salt. Next, 
we're going to put this in the blender in probably two batches. Ladle in the beautiful vegetables. This always has potential to get messy. Let's get that around. gonna get a little loud. I love this part. So I'm going to do this again with the second batch and then test for texture. It may need a little more stock or water. It's all blended, just beautiful, silky. I ended up adding about another cup or so of chicken stock just to, to my taste. It depends how, how thick you want it to be. Um, otherwise it was a, bit, a little bit like baby food, I would say. And then the last touch is a little agave. And that again is to taste. You don't have to add that. I like my soup a little sweet. It's kind of a little secret. That was probably about two tablespoons, give or take. There are all kinds of things that you can do with this. I've actually made this before. Um, when my kids were little, I put peanut butter in it and it made it very much like Thai. Um, there, you can make it spicier. You get to kind of play or adjust, um, with it, but it makes quite a bit of soup enough to even freeze for another day. So I'm going to go ahead and plate this and then we'll go ahead and eat. It's nothing like a beautiful carrot soup on a crisp spring day. There are different ways to serve this. I like to put a little bit of coconut milk, like right on, swirl it right on top. It adds flavor, it gives a little touch to make it super Thai. Um, some fresh um, chiffonade basil might be good, the finely shredded basil. I like to serve it with a little bit of lime. We're ready to eat. Can't wait to dig in. This has been so much fun. Today we've been in the garden. We've been in the library, in the kitchen. We've done a few things. Now I cannot wait to dig into this amazing soup. I hope it's a recipe that you um, might decide to make. And I hope, I hope to uh, have you join me again soon. To try this. Mm, love that smell of fresh lime. Okay, the grand finale. Mmm, it's so good. Sweet. Tastes like spring. See you next time. <laughs>